All right, so now we're going to um, learn a couple of different techniques for analyzing tolerances. And we'll begin on page 85. Notice on page 85 we've got a piece of a crankshaft assembly that shows the crankshaft, the coupling, the flywheel, a few bolts to hold the whole thing together. And we're going to do something simple to begin this uh, so I can show you these two techniques and then we'll switch later on and use a more complex version of this and then we'll do something that's much more complicated. But on this one I just want to show you the techniques. The geometric tolerances are on page 86. So we'll start with all of that. One of the things that we have to do is filter out the non-factors and of course only work with the things that are factors. So on that what we'll try and do is figure out what does the alignment. Um, certainly if we look at the 50s the difference between the LMC of D and the LMC of B uh, will be, let me see if I've got this on here, yep. The difference between the least material condition of D, which is here, 50.1, and B over here, 49.97, is 0.13. That's the most clearance that they could have. Up here, we've got an 8.9 LMC for the clearance holes, and oh, let's just call it an 8 millimeter screw. It could be smaller than that, but um, we'll, we'll work with the 8. The clearance there is quite a bit bigger. That's 0.9, that's a lot bigger than 0.13 down here. And so we can uh, say then that B and D are doing the alignment of the assembly. That means that we're going to filter out the clearance holes and the threaded holes as factors. We're going to filter in the OD, of course, those are factors. And um, what we're going to try and figure out is if I take my big red thumb and push up the coupling, then what is the overall assembly condition here from one side to the other. Now ideally we would work this from the middle but we're going to work it from the edge and that means that there's going to be one extra step at the very end. So we'll watch for that but the first thing we'll do is we'll route this and we know that uh, we will start at the bottom of the overall which is what we're trying to calculate. So if we are trying to calculate what the maximum is and that's all we care about is the maximum. This maximum overall, which we'll just call a gap, will be our maximum dimension for the assembly in a stationary state. That is really the key to this, in a stationary state. We'll want it in a rotational state eventually. But if we push this part up, we know that we're going to start at the bottom of this gap and we're going to work to the middle. And then from the middle, we're going to work to the top of the coupling where it contacts the crankshaft. And then we're going to jump off onto datum feature B here, which is the ID of that datum feature, and um, work down to the middle of B. And then we'll work from that to the top of the part. That is our route. It starts here and it ends here. All we need is the numbers, and um, probably the easiest numbers to work with will be the outside uh, of the part, because we know that's definitely a major factor. So if we look at the outside of the part, we know that the worst that it could be for getting this maximum gap is the biggest. Oh, by the way, if you wanted to calculate the minimum that the gap could be, it would just be, it would have nothing to do with most of this, it would just be 229.8, which is the smallest the OD on each part could be. If they were perfectly centered um, and they were made at their smallest, 229.8 would be the minimum gap. So the maximum is a little bit more complicated. So on this one, if we look at the outside diameter, we know that the biggest it can be is the factor. So we're going to work with that number. We know that um, just finding room to write that, but uh, diameter of 230.2 is the maximum material condition of the outside diameter. And then of course we have to say if this part was off center, which total runout allows it to be, we know that total runout controls coaxiality and um, also cylindricity on the OD. So we would say that if it was off center, well that certainly is going to affect 
the overall assembly condition and uh, so it can be off-center by 0.1. Radially, it, it's allowed to be off-center half of what appears in the feature control frame, 0 0.05. But in this case, we're going to talk in diameters for a while. So this will be plus 0.1. And we'll just call that the total runout tolerance. So what we get is a diameter of 230.3, which is the outer boundary of the outside diameter. And what we want to do is work in radii, so we're going to divide that by 2, and we'll get 115.15 as two of our numbers, really, because step 1 is 115.15, and step 4 is 115.15. And since both of those go up, they're both positive numbers. The only thing we don't know is the middle, and in the middle, we can figure that out. We can say, what would cause this maximized gap? If we look at D, the biggest that hole could be would be the most that I could shove the mating part up and have this edge overhang this edge. So I'm going to work with 50.10. Now 50.10 is the least material condition of D. Now, it's got a perpendicularity control on it, but if it was out of perpendicularity, the fit would actually not be looser, it would be tighter. And the reason is we're riding on A and C. So I'm just trying to draw why the perpendicularity is not a factor in what we're trying to calculate. What we could say is that we've got this part, and of course this part is the part that has that um, datum feature D on it. And let's just say that it's perfectly perpendicular. And we know that over here somewhere, there's the mating part with B on it. So let's just extend this over. And there's a shaft, which is called B. And if we push this part from the back with some sort of big thumb, eventually this fits into that hole. And then if we push it up, then of course it's going to slide up here the clearance, and this is going to slide up and overhang that. Now that's if they're perfectly perpendicular. If it's out of perpendicularity a bit, and let me show D being out of perpendicularity just a bit, then since we're riding on A and C, in other words we're bolted to A and C, then if I try to insert this and then push it up, it's going to hit much more quickly right there. And that means that the perpendicularity, if it's included, will not be the um, maximum, will not get us the maximum gap. About the only thing that could happen that would make it equal to it being ignored is if we said that this leans by the same amount as this does and in the same direction, then they would be able to be pushed up and the clearance would be exactly the same as if we ignore it completely. So we are going to ignore it completely. These, those perpendicularity controls would make the overall gap not as big and we want the maximum. All right, so now we'll just include those as factors. We know that, um, well, let me use a brown color here. We know that uh, 50.10 divided by 2 is 25.05. And 25.05 would be the third factor I'm sorry, the second factor, since we started on the brown part, the black part, I mean, this would be the 25.05. So that would be a positive number, and that'd be step number two. So one would be this, two would be this. We've already got four, and obviously what we need is three. And three would be B over here. Now, the smallest that B can be is 49.97. So we'll work with that, 49.97. Um, is the least material condition of B. We've already dismissed the perpendicularity control as a factor on D, so it's being dismissed on B as well. So if we divide this by 2, we'll get 24.985. Would somebody double check me on that? I think it's 985. That's it. All right, so that's the other factor. So we had this, and now we've got this and that would be step three, so let me just find a, a little bit of room to put that. That'd be a negative 24.985, and that'd be our step three. So we've got all our steps now. All we've got to do is put them in a numbers chart. We've got a negative 
and a positive. On this method, we do not have a plus and minus tolerance column. We just have pluses and minuses, but no plus and minus tolerance. Step number one, we know, was a positive 115.15. Step number two, we know, is a positive 25.05. Step number three is a negative 24.985. And step number four is another positive 115.15. Well, I can add the negatives. I know that's just the 24.985. Um, but uh, can somebody help me with the positives? What does that add up to? Zero. So uh, what does it add up to? 255.35. All right, so 255.35, and of course, that's a positive column. And all we're going to do is add those together, 255.35 plus 8. Let me move this down a little bit and give myself more room. The 24.985, we'll put it down here. So 255.35 plus a negative 24.985. And anybody know what that comes up to? <coughs> 230.365. This would be, in fact, the maximum overall dimension while stationary. But if we want it while rotating, what we've got to recognize is if this is rotating around this central axis, as we rotate it, this is going to come out over here, and it's going to overhang down there. Now, the amount that it's going to overhang is just the difference between step two and step three. So if we take the 25.05 and we subtract the 24.985, what we get is .065. Now, we know that's necessary because if you look at the 115.15, that's a radius of the OD, and the other 115.15 is a radius of the OD, OD. Together, they make a diameter. But these two, when subtracted, really are just the offset of these axes, and that is just a radius of 0.065. So we've got that in here once, but if we want it to be a diameter like the 230.3 is, then, of course, what we're going to do is add in that extra 0 0.065 one more time. And then we get the maximum gap while rotating. This would be 230.43. And that's the max rotating. Any questions about that one? Please ask them if you have them. <coughs> All right. That's actually my favorite method. We're going to use that a lot when we get to chapter 9. But let me show you another one that could be used to double check that answer since we've got all the numbers already. This will only take a moment. We're here and we work up to here, the center line of the uh, OD, let's call it. That would be a positive 115.15. And then we work from the center line of the of the uh, D feature to the center line of the B datum, and uh, we get uh, 0.065. We already know they're offset by that much. When I showed it over here, notice I ignored the fact that they were offset, and I got the fact that they were offset by the difference between these two numbers in the numbers chart. Over here, I'm just going to show the offset, and then we work from the middle of that to the top of the part, and we get another positive. All three of these numbers are positive, by the way. 115.15. So on this, there's only a positive column. Not only isn't there a plus or minus column, there's no negative column. So we've got step one is 115.15, step two is 0 .065, and step three is another 115.15. And so if we add these only, we get 230.365. And again, that's what we got before, and this is the max while stationary. But if we want it while rotating, all we've got to do is add in that 0 .065 again. And not surprisingly, we would get a diameter of 230.43. And that would be the max while rotating. So two methods to add to the method that we've been working on for the last day or so. 
and that is uh, using only the numbers that would get you what you're looking for. In this case, I'm not looking for the minimum gap. There's no reason to use the outer and the inner boundary. If I don't have to, this is much faster uh, just to get us one or the other. In this case, the maximum gap. And then, of course, over here, just showing that we could even reduce it to just the offset of the axes added to the radii of the outer boundary of the ODs. And that would get us the maximum gap. Either stationary or rotating, whatever you want. If you want to know what size box it would take to put it in, go with the 230.365 for shipping. But if you know, want to know what size assembly it would re require a housing that it could spin within, well then go with 230.43. Any questions?